Hi and welcome to a British audiophile and if you don't know me already my name is Taron and welcome to my review of the Hegel H95 amplifier. Now this is a well-reviewed amplifier the likelihood is that you've seen other reviews of this product so I'm just going to share with you my particular take on this review. I'm going to cover my usual segments from design, technical insights, setup and partnering equipment and then wrap up with a conclusion. In the sound quality segment, I always do a comparison based review. And I think that's really important because it gives you reference points and you can see fairly objectively where one product lands in relation to others. And wherever possible, you try and compare it with products at a similar price. But that isn't what I'm planning to do here today. I'm going to compare it to my IOTA VX SA3, an amplifier that retails here in the UK for £400. That's practically a quarter of the price of the Hegel H95 that retails here in the UK for circa £1,500. And the question I really want to ask is this, or question I really want to answer is this, what do you get extra for your money? The other thing that I want to look at is how this Hegel product compares to an earlier Hegel product. Now, granted, my Hegel H160 falls into a higher tier of Hegel products. The Hegel H160 has been replaced with the Hegel H190. That's the best part of three grand. I think the Hegel H160 was the best part of two and a half grand. But there have been some technical innovations that Hegel have done over the last couple of generations of amplifier since my H160 was in production. So it'll be interesting to see how close the new kid on the block, the Hegel H95, gets to a bigger sibling from a few years ago. The Hegel H95 is 430 millimeters wide, 310 millimeters deep, and 100 millimeters high. It weighs in at 10.6 kilograms and comes in a black finish, costing 1,500 pounds here in the UK, producing 60 watts into 8 ohms and 106 watts into 4 ohms. On the front, you've got an input selection, a volume control, an OLED display, and a headphone socket. It's a utilitarian and minimal look, very much form over function. I think the look is better suited to the slimline profile of the H95 rather than the more substantial H160. On the rear, there's one line level analog output and you're limited to two line level analog inputs on single ended RCA. But you're reasonably well served with digital inputs. There's one coaxial input and three optical inputs. There's also a USB input, but that's limited to 96 kilohertz playback and a maximum of 24 bit resolution. There's also a streaming module built into this amplifier, which you can connect to via the ethernet or wirelessly via AirPlay or UPnP apps. So let's take a look inside for this section. I just want to point out some of the differences between the Hegel H95 and the previous model, the H90, and also some of the key differences between this amplifier and my Hegel H160. So when I first lifted the lid on this amplifier, I got a little excited to see that little transformer on the right hand side. I thought they'd separated out the power supply for the digital section all the way back to the transformer, but that isn't the case actually the larger transformer runs both the analog and the digital section as was the case on the previous model. What the smaller transformer does is it powers this device in standby mode so effectively it consumes less power in standby mode saving the planet. I think the transformer on my Hegel H160 is a little larger than what you have here. So let's take a look at the power supply section and those four big cylinders, those are the power supply filter caps. There's four of them with 10,000 microfarads apiece. That's 40,000 microfarads in total. There's two more of them on my Hegel H160. So there's 60,000 microfarads as opposed to 40. And that gives the bigger amplifier a little bit more current reserve. This board here is the DAC and it's new to the Hegel H95 compared to the H90 
it's lifted out of the Hegel H120 and the 190. So now all three amplifiers have the same DAC. And there's essentially three upgrades from the H90. There's the latest AKM DAC chip. It's got an improved reclocking mechanism and that helps to reduce jitter. And it's got an improved analog output stage, which also helps to improve sound quality. That green board mounted on top of it is the streaming module and it's got that heavy shielding and that's also uprated to give you more streaming functionality. It's now the same streaming module across the entire Hegel range right the way from this model the H95 all the way to the 590. Now the DAC on my Hegel H160 is earlier to this and earlier to the one on the H90. It's basically based on a standalone Hegel DAC, the HD11, which was an earlier product. Now let's take a look at the output section of this amplifier. And what you can see is four output bipolar transistors running in class AB configuration in the classic push-pull mode. And that's half the amount that I have on my Hegel H160. There's eight of them as opposed to four that you have here. And that's why the Hegel H160 can deliver a lot more power and a lot more current. The other thing to note down here are those blue rectangular devices that you see. And that's Hegel's painted technology, the sound engine that I'll talk a little bit more about in a second. And this amplifier, like the H90 before it has the sound engine too, as opposed to my Hegel H160, which has the sound engine one. Now the main difference between the sound engine two and the sound engine one is that the sound engine two just works faster in terms of analyzing distortion. So let's pull back out here. The architecture of this is shared across the H95, the 120, and the 190, and my Hegel H160. So the way the things are laid out is what Hegel called their H1 platform. It's when you get to the 590 and the 390 that you get a different type of architecture. Now I just want to take a second here to explain Hegel's primary patented technology, their sound engine. Now in most amplifiers, a proportion of the output is taken and fed back in reverse phase to the input in something called a negative feedback loop. This introduces something called global feedback delay. Now this isn't an issue at low frequencies, but it can be a problem at mid and high frequencies where it can have a negative impact on the sound. According to Bent Holter, Hegel's founder and chief engineer, there's another problem that in particular plagues class AB amplifiers. Music is dynamic in its nature, and because of this dynamic nature, it causes temperature changes in the transistors themselves. And this changes the biasing conditions in the transistors to something that is suboptimal. Now, this is particularly a problem with class AB amplifiers where you've got one transistor handing over a signal to another transistor because it introduces a type of modulated crossover distortion. Hegel's sound engine is supposed to get around both of these problems and it works a little bit like noise cancelling headphones where the output is analysed compared to the input and therefore you can identify the distortion. By inputting the reverse phase of that distortion you can effectively eliminate it. It works in a feed forward type of system so there's no negative feedback loop and there's no global feedback delay. The other key thing is that it's dynamic in the way in which it operates. So regardless of the temperature of the transistors, it will work effectively. No crossover distortion. The other byproduct of a feed-forward system is that it results in a higher damping factor. Now the damping factor is the difference between the output impedance of your amplifier and the input impedance of your speakers. Normally a ratio of a few hundred is considered to be quite good. But with the Hegel system, you're getting damping factors in the thousands. It's 1,000 plus on my Hegel H160, and it's 2,000 plus on the Hegel H95. Now, it's debatable whether this 
higher damping factor has any real impact on sound quality once it gets above a few hundred. But it's certainly true that up to a point, a higher damping factor does result in better control over your speaker drivers. I mentioned right at the beginning of this video that I think the comparison element of reviews are an essential part in order to provide you with some context and a frame of reference. I'll go one step further and say that I'd be a little bit skeptical of any review that raves about a product but doesn't compare it to anything. Now let's kick start with those comparisons. Is the Hegel H95 better than my older Hegel H160? And the answer is uh, no. I'd have been flabbergasted if it was in fairness. There's no giant killer here. It's all stuff that you'd expect. The Hegel H160 has got more power. It's 150 watts as opposed to 60 watts, which means it will play louder. But it's really the extra current capability of the Hegel H160 that comes into play here. Dynamics are more effortless. The sound stage is wider. It's deeper. All stuff that was to be expected. What came as a little bit of a surprise though was that I also felt the Hegel H160 was a little bit cleaner in its response than the Hegel H95. Leading edges of notes were a little bit more cleanly defined. The decay of notes were a little bit more present as well. And that meant that those little details in the recording, the micro details I call them, just popped out a little bit more readily. I wasn't really expecting that given all the innovation that Hegel have done in recent years with the Sound Engine 2 improved preamp sections and improved DAC, but I'm here to report what I find. It's not all one-way traffic here though. There's a couple of criticisms that I have of my Hegel H160 that seem to have been addressed in the latest Hegel product going by the Hegel H95. Now my first criticism of the 160 is that at low listening volumes it can sound a little flat and lifeless. That isn't the case with the 95. And the second problem is that there's a little leanness in the lower mid-range of the Hegel H160 that isn't present in the H95 either. It seems that Hegel have got closer to their key goal, which is to make sure that the amplifier doesn't impose any particular characteristic on the music and the speakers that you're using. And that seems to be more the case with the Hegel H95 than it is with my Hegel H160. The second comparison that I want to do is with my IOTA VX SA3. That's an amplifier that retails for £400, so it might seem ridiculous to compare it with an amplifier at almost four times its price. But it's not as silly as you might think. What do you actually get for your extra money? Is the Hegel more dynamic? And the answer is yes, but not dramatically so. The IOTA is a very gutsy, punchy little amplifier pumping out some 50 watts into 8 ohms and the Hegel punches a little harder, the soundstage is a little bit bigger, but it isn't that significant. So what about transparency? Well, the difference in transparency is more noticeable than the difference in dynamics. You certainly hear more of the recording with the Hegel than you do with the IOTA. It's not night and day difference, but it is significant. What is remarkably different is the refinement between the two amplifiers. It's the control and texture on the bass, the fullness in the mid-range, and the refinement at high frequencies in particular. There's no rough edges, and that's what really you're paying for. Let's talk about the internal DAC in the H95 before I move on to the next section. Now the internal DAC, especially through the USB input, places some limitations on the type of files you can play through it. The USB input is limited to 96 kilohertz and 24-bit resolution. If you want to play 188 files or 192 files, I have some of those, you're going to have to use your optical or your coaxial input or find some way of downsampling the signal before it gets to the H95. That aside though, it's a very fine sounding DAC inside the H95 I compared it to my Chord Mojo and I found the Hegel DAC a little bit cleaner, a little bit faster compared to the fuller, richer Mojo. There's not a huge disparity in terms of sound quality, but if I was going to give the edge to any particular DAC, I'd probably give it to the internal DAC on the H95. It's that good. And for that reason, I don't think many people are likely to want to seek an external DAC when they're using this particular amplifier.
This is going to be relatively straightforward. As I mentioned earlier in the review, the Hegel H95 does a remarkable job of not imposing its own character on the music. It effectively gets out of the way and allows the speakers to do their thing. As a result, it's going to work really well with a whole variety of speakers. But you have to be realistic. There's still only 60 watts on tap into 8 ohms. I think it goes up to 106 watts into 4 ohms. And I don't know what the peak current capability is, but there's only one pair of output transistors per channel. So it's probably likely to be somewhere around the 9, 10 amps region. And it's not going to drive speakers to ridiculously loud volumes. And if you've got an impedance plot on your speaker that goes up and down all over the place, it's probably not going to be the best amplifier to drive a real pig of a speaker either. I wouldn't describe my Proact Response 1 SCs as a real pig to drive. I think the minimum impedance drops down to only 4.5 ohms, but it does have an impedance plot that moves around quite a bit. And because of that, they do like a bit of current to get them singing and under control. Now, the Proact Response 1 SCs were also the most revealing speaker that I tried with the Hegel H95. So naturally they're going to show more difference between the H95 than the H160. But you remember that characteristic that I was talking about with the H95 where the leading edges of notes weren't so cleanly defined? Well that was more noticeable with the Proax than it was with the other speakers. And I'm going to put that down to the current capability of the H95. Now I know the H95 has the higher damping factor, 2000, yada 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 but that really isn't the whole picture. My PSB Imagine Minis are a little 600 pound speaker. Now, they're an easier load to drive than my Product Response One SCs. They have a tonal balance that's fairly neutral, maybe a touch on the cool side of neutral, if anything. And they're very fast and very clean. They combine with the Hegel H95 to make a very fine combination, very much a tell it like it is kind of presentation. I think the setup would make a very nice bedroom system or a small room system, especially if they're augmented with a subwoofer. If I get a speaker in for review, I'll test it with a minimum of three amplifiers. And if I get an amplifier in for review, I test it with a minimum of three speakers. And that's so I can get some consistency about how the product is performing and hopefully provide you with some reliable information. Now the last combination that I tried with the Hegel H95 is the speakers that you see behind me on the stands. Those are the Amphion Argon Ones. Now that's the speaker brand that UK Hegel distributor actually uses to demonstrate Hegel amplifiers. I'm not going to say too much about that combination because the review of the Argon Ones is still not complete and I'd like to share that in that particular review. But there was a very good synergy between the Argon Ones and the Hegel H95. There's no doubt in my mind that we're talking about a real fine product here. The internal DAC in the Hegel H95 is excellent. This amplifier has streaming capability and within the sound envelope that it creates, it does a really fine job. It's fast, it's clean, it has great tonality. The sound stage that it throws out is decent and within that sound stage, the images that it creates are nicely etched out. But does it represent a gold standard of what's available for £1,500? Well, it didn't topple my Hegel H160. I didn't expect it to, so there's no criticism there. And it was comfortably way ahead of my IOTA VX SA3, but then at almost four times the price I'd expect it to be. Ultimately, this comes down to a call of my judgment and I'm gonna pull it back from outstanding just for a couple of reasons. One is, I know there's a couple of other amplifiers at this price that have better current driving capabilities and I wanna investigate what those are about. I have heard them, they sounded impressive, but I wanna just see what they're like when I get them home, if and when that happens. And the second thing is, I can't help but feel a little bit shortchanged by the USB connection on this particular DAC. It's limited to 9624 kilohertz, which means there's certain files that it won't play, wouldn't play my DSD files. Now, I know that Hegel have sound engineering reasons for the reason why they go down this route, but 
I think people who are looking at hi-fi around this price point will find that a little bit restrictive. But there's no doubt this is a very fine sounding amplifier and it comfortably and very easily gets a highly recommended from this channel. So that's it for my review of the Hegel H95. Hope you've liked it. Please hit that like button. Please share it. And if you like what I do with this channel and you haven't subscribed already, please think about subscribing. But for today, for now, British Audiophile, signing off.